Hello, welcome. As promised, this was the week of emulation, and the progress doesn't stop. Today, I bring you the latest updates on PCSX2, which has received a significant update with fixes for over 120 games, and RPCS3, which has almost doubled its performance for those with weaker CPUs. Let's start with the news about PCSX2. Recently, a feature was implemented that allows PCSX2 to use up to 128 megabytes of memory for its processor, the Emotion Engine. Previously, the emulator only allowed 32 megabytes. This increase in memory will improve performance in some homebrews and a small selection of games that have not yet been disclosed. Apparently, enabling this option doesn't cause issues in other games, unlike the Yuzu version that allows more RAM. However, there is a downside. All save states will now need to be rebuilt. Therefore, if you are playing a game that relies on save states, make sure to reach the nearest native save point before updating to the next version, or all your save states will be invalidated. Some Linux users have also reported issues when activating this option, with the emulator not running correctly. A long-standing issue with PCSX2, where light beams were not rendered correctly, has been fixed. This implementation mainly corrected the game Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock, where neon effects sometimes overexposed and rendered incorrectly. Project Snowblind, which had its lighting, HUD, and transparencies completely broken, now renders correctly. Tomb Raider Legend, which had artificial lighting, internal lights, and even sunlight passing through buildings, now also renders correctly. And Urban Chaos, where fire, smoke, and fog effects have received visual improvements, although more subtle. And the biggest fix of all was in the process of upscaling and downscaling, that is, when using a resolution different from the console's native resolution. Previously, when resizing certain games, post-processing effects in Bloom were rendered incorrectly, causing a ghost-like effect on the character or objects in the game. This fix directly improved the visual quality of over 120 games, including Ace Combat 4, Black, Dragon Ball Z Franchise, Def Jam, Destroy All Humans, Devil May Cry 3, Driver, Guitar Hero 3, Killzone, Kingdom Hearts 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Midnight Club 3, Mortal Kombat, entire Naruto series, Okami, Anamusha, Prince of Persia series, Shadow of the Colossus. I'll leave the complete list of games in the pinned comment. Remember, this fix is still being explored, with new games being added to the list almost constantly as the community continues to test and post their results, allowing developers to gather data on which games have actually been fixed. These three fixes I mentioned are already available. Just update your PCSX2 to the nightly version. Before we move on to RPCS3, if you enjoy this type of update, don't forget to leave a like to help spread the video. And if you're new here and don't want to miss any news, consider subscribing to the channel to follow two new videos every week. Now let's talk about RPCS3. This year, RPCS3 turned 13 years old and has already reached an incredible milestone. 70% of the entire PlayStation 3 library is in a playable state. We know the RPCS3 development team is quite strict with their list, considering games playable only if they are almost 90% optimized. So, this 70% could represent many more games depending on your processor. Even though I haven't talked much about this emulator recently, there have been many improvements, and I'm going to highlight some of them. First, the way save states are compressed has been improved. To create a save state in an emulator, it's necessary to dump and store all the memory allocated to the game at that moment. This caused almost all more complex games on RPCS3 to take up more than 4 gigabytes per save state. If you were using an HDD to save progress, creating and loading these files could take a considerable amount of time, during which RPCS3 would freeze. With the new implementation, save states have become extremely fast thanks to the multi-threaded compression method. Additionally, the ZSDD compression method is now used, a more modern API that focuses on performance while maintaining high data compression rates. Another update is the performance boost for older and weaker CPUs. There has been up to a 100% performance increase for those with CPUs up to 4 cores. The RPCS3 team demonstrated that in the game Demon's Souls, there was a significant FPS gain. Before the update, the maximum reach was 38 FPS, and after the fix, it jumped to 76 FPS. Other games, like Persona 5, had a smaller but still significant gain, going from 25 FPS to 32 FPS which is enough for the game to no longer experience slowdowns, as it stays above 30 FPS. Moreover, there has been a significant improvement in the accuracy of games using Insomniac's engine, such as the Ratchet Clank franchise games. Previously, the environment's vegetation was not rendered correctly, but in the latest versions, this issue has been resolved, 
as you can see in the background images. This fix is due to the implementation of complete transformation constant based instances in the RSEX. In my tests with Ratchet Clank A Crack in Time, I observed a considerable performance improvement. However, random crashes still occur, even with 32GB of RAM to store all the shaders. Despite this, the improvement in vegetation rendering is notable. And that was the video folks. I hope you enjoyed the updates. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.